Yo, what's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. So we're checking out some Quentin Tarantino today. We checked out Pulp Fiction, man. You should definitely go check that out if you have not seen our reaction to it. We might have over-talked in it a little bit because, to be honest, we were having such a good time watching that movie. I wasn't really sure what in the world we were watching because no. it was very, like... <laughs> Unexpected. Well, you guys know, man. Y'all seen it, so it was fun, don't you think? Yes crazy movie man it was highly requested on patreon and actually won a poll but we're starting quentin tarantino from the beginning because we had so much fun with that movie so uh baby you want to tell us something about this movie when was yeah. it born um in 1992 just like we were that's right <laughs> so this movie came out the same year that uh, i was born so i'm really excited to see basically what's up man i guess with the movie so it's gonna be pretty interesting to see quentin tarantino's very first movie that he directed and i'm excited so this is sort of like us learning about Quentin, you know right. what I mean? So I don't know anything about the dude other than like what I saw in Pulp Fiction. I probably <laughs> saw some more of his movies at some point. Yeah, and I don't even know what his movies are, but I'm sure at some point I've seen one of them. But uh, like, comment, subscribe, hit us up on Patreon. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Like always, it really does mean the world to us. And I'm excited. I'm gonna try to hush a little bit more this time because guys, I was hyped in the last <laughs> video. So let's all right, go. let's go. what like a virgin's about. It's all about a girl who digs a guy with a big dick. It's about a girl who's very vulnerable, and then she meets a guy who's whoa, very whoa, 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 whoa. Like a virgin's not about some sensitive girl who meets a nice fella. What in the heck? <laughs> hey, I recognize that guy. Yeah, from somewhere. I used to like her early stuff. Borderline, when she got off that top of the preacher phase, I tuned out. That's an old address book I found on a coat I haven't worn in a That's Quentin time. right there, right? Mm -hmm. It's all about this coos who's a regular f***ing shit. And one day, she meets this John Holmes mother and it's like, whoa, baby. I mean, this cat is like Charles Bronson in The Great Escape. And she's feeling something she didn't feel since fast. Pain. It hurts just like it did the first time. You see, the pain is reminding the fuck machine what it was once like to be a virgin. Hence, like a virgin. We might both. I'm sick of f***ing hearing it, Joe. I'll give it back to you when we leave. <laughs> what do you mean when we leave? Toby. Toby Wong. Toby Chung, f Charlie Chan. Are you gonna put it away? I'm gonna do whatever the f I want with it. Want me to shoot this guy? Shit. <laughs> you shoot me in a dream, you better wake up and apologize. <laughs> 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 kind of like Pulp Fiction, that started out over some breakfast, right? Something like that, in a little diner thing. The night the lights went out in Georgia came on. I I heard that song since it was big. But this is the first time I ever realized that the girl singing the song is the one who shot Andy. I'll take care of the check. You guys can get the tip. Hey. Should be about a buck a piece. When I come back, I want my book. Sorry, it's my book now. Hey, I changed my mind. Shoot this piece of shit, will you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to figure out what they are. Yeah, like the mob or the something? mob or something. All right, everybody cough up some green for the little lady. Come on, throw in a buck. Uh-uh, I don't tip. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't believe in it. You don't believe you don't in believe it. In <laughs> you know what these chicks make? They make shit. Don't give me that. She don't make enough money. She can quit. Dang. I don't tip because society says I have to. All right. I mean, I'll tip if somebody really deserves a tip. If they really put forth the effort, I'll give them something extra. But I mean, it's tip dang. Them what did they got to do for that? That's right. They got to go above <laughs> and beyond, huh? I mean, as far as I'm concerned, that's like a table of nine. Hey, this girl was nice. She was okay. I mean, she wasn't anything special. <laughs> I ordered coffee, right? Now we've been here a long time. She's only filled my cup three times. I mean, when I order coffee, I want it filled six times. She's not an octopus. He's a man of principle, though. Mm-hmm. They make minimum wage. And I used to work minimum wage, and when I did, I wasn't lucky enough to have a job that society deemed tip-worthy. You don't care they'd count on your tips to live? You know what this is? Um, Mr. Krabs. The smallest mm -hmm. violin playing just for the waitresses. <laughs> I don't have any idea what you're talking about. This is a hard job. So I was working at McDonald's, but you don't feel the need to tip them, do you? But no, society says, don't tip these guys over here, but tip these guys over here. That's bullshit. Waitressing is the number one occupation for female non-college graduates in this country. It's the one job basically any woman can get and make a living on. The reason is because of their tips. Dang. This became like a straight <laughs> This is debate. a political discussion. I mean, I'm very sorry the government taxes their tips. That's <clears throat> fucked up. That ain't my fault. Get mad at me, guys, right? But I will say, I cannot stand going to Subway and then having to tip. I can't stand it. I know I'm controversial. Everyone hate me. I get it. But, bro, I'm, I'm going in there to order the sandwich. Like Somebody has to make the sandwich. Like Just because I have to watch them make the sandwich, I have to tip them. If they were in the back, I wouldn't have to tip them. You know, going to Subway, you spend $15, $17 a sandwich going there. Oh, now. yeah. It's crazy. It is because you have now. to tip. It's insane. It's absolutely crazy. And then you have to tip all these places that 
you used to not even have to tip. And I feel like that too. I, I'm sorry that, you know, life's tough and all that, but man, like, geez, it's expensive to go to Subway, like, bro. And I don't like to tip $4 either because then I feel like a piece of crap. Like, you know, I feel greedy <laughs> yeah. if I tip like four bucks. So I'm inclined to want to tip decent. And it's just a weird thing. They deserve it. They deserve it. But I learned the type. Because if you're expecting me to help out with the rent, you're in for a big surprise. Just convince me. <laughs> Give me my dollar back. Wait a minute. Who didn't throw in? Mr. Pink. Mr. Pink. Why not? They don't tip. You don't tip? What do you mean you don't tip? They don't believe in it. Shut up. <laughs> Come on, you. Cough up a bucket, cheap bastard. I paid for your goddamn <laughs> breakfast. Since you pay for the breakfast, I'll put in. But normally, I would never do this. Dang. I told you he's a man of principle. Mm -hmm. Just cough in your goddamn <laughs> buck like everybody else. <laughs> Thank you. I like that guy. They're walking down the street like that really something, ain't they? I know. <laughs> so Quentin Tarantino's opening scene of his first movie was him? Yeah. Hey, that's ballsy, I guess. But so far, he's an actor as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I mean, we've seen him two times already. So it looks like they're about to go like on a like heist or something. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, they're about to rob a bank or something. Mafia style. No way y'all are fitting in just two of those. You'd be surprised. Yeah, they didn't want us to see how they fit in there. Yeah. <laughs> We're gonna have some lap sitting. Just hold on, buddy boy. Somebody got shot or stabbed. Oh no! Hey, that dude played in Pulp Fiction too. Yeah, at the beginning, end of the end too, right? You hurt real bad, but you ain't dying. What happened to him? Me, Larry. <laughs> he was just fine a minute oh, ago. Oh, excuse me, I didn't realize you had a degree in medicine. Answer me, please. Are you a doctor? No, I'm not. So you admit you don't know what you're talking about. Slide so back and listen to the news. I'm taking you back to the rendezvous. Joe's gonna get you a doctor. The doctor's gonna fix you up, and you're gonna be okay. He's there we go. Oh, say it. Say it. You're gonna be okay. <laughs> say it. Say it. Say it. I'm okay, Larry. Correct. <laughs> hey, at least because okay. of Pulp Fiction, we know how to clean that car. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have it looking right, couldn't we? <laughs> <laughs> if you say so, that guy, that guy's instructions are pretty basic. <laughs> right, yeah. Like, why they even hire that guy? <laughs> you got it, baby. And we're in a warehouse. Oh! Who's a tough guy? <laughs> Come on, who's a tough guy? I'm a tough guy. Who's a tough guy? Dang, he's really going through it, huh? I know, and he's basically treating him like a baby. <laughs> we made it. We f made it. Just in case you didn't hear it the first time. Stop banging your head. You didn't want to hurt the floor, yeah. do you? When Joe gets here, we should be in time now. He's going to help you out. He's going to take care of you. Okay? We're just going to sit here and we're going to wait for Joe. Who are we waiting for? Joe. Joe. <laughs> I'm scared, man. Can you please hold me? <laughs> hey. He wants to be cuddled. I hate to be insensitive, but geez. Aren't these some gangsters? Mm -hmm. I know. <laughs> it's a good teammate. It's kind of nice that he just said, yeah. He's probably Catholic. Oh, and he br he's combing his hair. <laughs> Go ahead and be scared. You've been brave enough for one day. <laughs> Jeez. They're true pals. When Joe gets here, I make you 100% again. Bless your heart for what she's trying to do. I was panicking for a minute back there, but I got my senses back now. The situation is I'm shot in the belly. Without mm. medical attention, I'm gonna die. I can't take you to a hospital. Shut up, man! Strap me on the sidewalk. I'll take care of myself. I won't tell him anything, man. Oh, um, he's like scared of a rat, yeah. yeah. Don't tell them anything. He just wants to live. You're not gonna fing die, kid. You're gonna be fine. Along with the kneecap, the gut is the most painful area a guy can get shot in. But it takes a long time to die from it. I'm talking days. Jeez. I wish yeah, you were sure. dead. But not geez. always days, but yeah. <laughs> not a setup or what? Orange got tagged. A Good. setup. Where's the brown? Dead. The cop shot. Mm. One of those guys in the that were eating. Somebody f us up big time, man. You really think we were set up? 
I don't think we got set up. I know we got set up. I mean, really, seriously, where did all those cops come from? The alarm went off, okay? When an alarm goes off, you got an average of four minutes response time, unless a patrol car is cruising that street at that particular moment. And in one minute, there were 17 blue boys out there. Remember that second wave that showed up in the cars, okay? Those are the ones responding to the alarm, man. Those first ones. I'm telling you, man, they were there and they were waiting for us. What were they trying to rob? I know, that's, we missed that part. A jewelry store? <laughs> they're saying alarm? Whoever said something knows about this place. They got the cops here waiting for us, man. They got the cops coming here right now. Let's go in the other room. Hey, right in there. What have we got ourselves into, babe? I know, like... We just <laughs> fell right in this. Are they, like, in, like, a safe building or something? You know what I felt funny about this job right off? As soon as I felt that I should have said no thank you. It was like that every time I got caught buying weed. Same thing, man. I didn't trust the guy. I felt funny about him. I wanted to believe him, you know? <laughs> done is done. I need you cool. Are you cool? I am cool. <laughs> Put some water in there. He said whoever ratted on his nose about this place. So one of those dudes at the dinner table, right? One of those there. people are a rat. I guess they got set up. I have a cigarette. I quit. Why you got one? <laughs> Obnoxious. That reminds me of when that homeless guy asked you. Oh yeah. Look through what happened. We're in the place. Everything's going fine. Then the alarm gets tripped. I turn around and all these cops are outside. And Mr. Blonde starts to shoot all the ammo. That's not correct. The cops did not show up after the alarm went off. Right? The cops didn't show up until after Mr. Blonde started shooting everybody. Mr. Blonde. They didn't let their presence be known until after Mr. Blonde became a madman. Right? I'm not saying they weren't there. I'm saying they were there. But they didn't make it, they, they didn't move until after Mr. Blonde started shooting everybody. I mean, that's how I know we were set up. Enough of this Mr. White shit. Oh, wait, 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 man. Don't, don't tell me your name, man. I don't want to know it. Oh, they don't want no culpability. <laughs> that's why they His got name's these, Mr. White. That's why they got these names of like Mr. Pink, Mr. Mm -hmm. White. His name's Mr. White, like Breaking Bad. <clears throat> How did you get out? I shot my way out. Everybody started shooting, so I blasted my way out of there. <laughs> <laughs> so we have to miss that part. We didn't get to see it. Maybe we're going to see it in chunks. You know how Pulp Fiction, the timeline, jump back and forth? It'll probably be somewhat similar here. That guy's like, damn, Bulldog is just running over everybody. He's a real life GTA character. <laughs> Definitely. Get oh, hey. shot. She has some cool shorts, though. I know. He would have loved the guys on Bolt Fiction. That felt so like, I don't know, man. That just felt so like 80s or something. A couple of cops. Like just some old school shootout with the police, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man, could you believe Mr. Blonde? I, mean, I don't want to kill anybody. If I got to get out that door and you're standing in my way, one way or the other, you're getting out of my way. Choice between doing 10 years, taking out some stupid mother Ain't no choice at all. But I ain't no madman either. Can't work with a guy like that. I came this close to taking his ass out myself. So one of their guys I went mean, crazy. Everybody panics. <laughs> Things get tense. It's human nature. You panic. I don't care what your name is. You can't help it. What you don't do is start shooting up the place and start killing people. Yeah. Right. Psychopath ain't a professional. You don't know what those sick are going to do next. How old do you think that black girl was? 20? Maybe 21? If that. Oh, she got so, shot. See what happened to anybody else? I guess. Me and Orange jumped in the car, ground floored it. If that, I don't know what we're doing. What do I think? I mean, uh, you know, the cops either caught him or killed him. You don't think it's possible one of them got a hold of diamonds and... No, no way. Diamonds, okay. You're so sure. So they probably did rob a jewelry store. I got the diamonds. Whoa, whoa. He had a briefcase. Where? I stashed them. Look, Smart. if you want to come with me, let's go get them right now. Right this second, man, because I think... Uh, stay in here, man, we should have our f***ing heads examined. I say the plan becomes null and void once we find out we got a rat in the house. We ain't got the slightest f***ing idea what happened to Mr. Blonde and Mr. Blue. I mean, they could both be dead or maybe they're arrested. Yeah, they don't know our names, but they could be singing about this place. The heist went wrong. A heist went wrong. One of their boys started shooting something up. The cops came. He got away. One of their dudes died, maybe? Or got shot? One died and, like, Three one's bad. bad. four-man job. I discovered one of the team was an undercover cop. There we go. So who's the rat this time? Mr. Blue? Mr. Brown? Joe? Me and Joe go back a long time. I can tell you definitely, Joe didn't know what Think about this bullshit. Hey, look, I've known Joe since I was a kid, okay? And me saying he definitely had nothing to do with it is ridiculous. 
For all I know, you're the rat. For all I know, you're the fucking rat. <laughs> For all we know, he's the rat. <laughs> that kid in there is dying from a fucking bullet I saw him take. So don't you be calling him a rat. That rat word got brought up. He got mad, didn't he? <laughs> Disrespected his, his honor. Take a squirt. <laughs> what? Go down the hall. Take a squirt. Yeah, <laughs> what? <laughs> this is what 92 was like. A bunch of arguing and cigarettes. By the way, how's Alabama? <laughs> ain't much oh, change. <laughs> I haven't seen Bama over a year and a half. We worked for a little while. Did about four jobs together. Then decided to call it quits. You push that woman man thing too long and it gets to you after a while. Mr. Yes, White. Five man job. Busted in and busted out of a diamond wholesalers. Can you move the ice afterwards? Hey, what happened to Marcella Spivey? Didn't he always move your ice? How you doing 20 years? What's the exposure like? Two minutes, tops. But it's a tough two minutes. How many employees? I'd say around 20. But on this particular day, they're getting a shipment of polished stones from Israel. They get picked up the next day and sent to Vermont. No, they're not. <laughs> <laughs> I can't help but think of the infinity What's the stones. Cut, Papa? Yeah, we watched way too much Marvel over here. <laughs> I'm out of here, man. I'm going to check into a motel for a few days. Is he dead or what? He ain't dead. Oh, did he see breath on his glasses? Without medical attention, he will die for sure. What are we going to do, man? We can't take him to a hospital. Bullet in his belly is oh my, my God. Fault. Now, while that might not mean jack to you, it means a hell of a lot to me. Stay in here, Goofy. We got to book up. Joe could help. Yeah, where's Joe? Joe could get him to a doctor. Assuming we can trust Joe, how are we going to get in touch with him? He's supposed to be here, but he ain't, which is making me very nervous about being here. I don't think he's going to be too happy with us, okay? He planned a robbery, and he's got a bloodbath on his hands now. He's got dead cops, dead robbers, dead civilians. I mean, if I was him, I'd try and put as much distance between me and this, and this mess as humanly possible. No, I don't like the idea of turning him over to the cops. If we don't, he's going to die. All right, then I guess we take him to a hospital. I mean, if that's what he said, let's do it. <laughs> well, he knows a little about me. Wait, wait, oh, did he tell him you something? You didn't tell him your name, did you? I told him my first name. And where I was oh, from. my. <laughs> Why? You have one job. <laughs> He asked. <laughs> he just got shot. It was my fault he got shot. Hey, but why is he asking him personal questions? I know, especially after he got shot. <laughs> I swear to God, I thought he was going to die right then and there. I'm trying to comfort him. Mm. And he asked me what my name was. I mean, the man was dying in my arms. What the f was I supposed to do? I see your side. Just say Tell Larry. I'm sorry. Or maybe I should have, but I couldn't. I'm sure it was a very beautiful scene between you. Don't <laughs> patronize me! <laughs> you. Now he knows A, your name, B, what you look like, C, where you're from, and D, what your specialty is. We ain't taking him to a hospital. Yeah, he he'll, he'll have to tell him that. I'm very sad about that, but some fellas are lucky and some ain't. Oh, you touch man. me for man. Dang. You wanna f with me? I'll show you who you f with. You wanna shoot me, you little piece of sh You're acting like a first year f thief. I'm acting like a professional. <laughs> I didn't tell him my name. I didn't tell him where I was from. Shit, 15 minutes ago, you almost told me your name. <laughs> you kids shouldn't play so rough. It's the blood. He said, I'm acting like a professional. <laughs> that part was crazy. What happened to you? I figured you were dead. Did you see what happened to Blue? Look, Brown is dead. Orange got it in the belly. You better start talking, asshole. <laughs> we need you acting freaky like we need a bag on our hip. We think we got a rat in the house. What makes you say that? Is that supposed to be funny? Nobody's going anywhere. Piss on this f***ing turd. We're out of here. What the heck? Don't take another step, Mr. White. F*** you, maniac! That guy came out of nowhere, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. With any trick you have, a madman almost gets me shot! What the f*** are you talking about? That f***ing shooting spree! They set off the alarm. They deserve what they got. Is he the one who went on the spree? Not sure yet. If I know what kind of guy you were, I never would have agreed to work with you. Are you going to bark all wow. day? That is him. Doggy? Or are you gonna bite? I'm sorry, I didn't catch it. Are you gonna bark all day, little dog? <laughs> hey, come on! Am I the only professional? You said yourself you thought about taking him out. Fucking <laughs> yeah, I did, okay? Field, it? Yeah. I did. It's fucking homicidal to be working with the cops. You taking his side? No! Somebody's sticking a red hot poker up our asses. I wanna know whose name's on the handle. That man's got away with I words, don't he? <laughs> I'm pretty sure you're okay. He wants to know the name on the handle. I'm positive you're on the level. So let's try and figure out who the bad guy is, alright? That was really exciting. <laughs> I got something outside that uh, I'd like to show you guys, so follow me. Where? To my car. Would you forget your french fries to go with the soda? I'm sure you'll like it. Come on. Hmm. What the heck is it gonna be? This is like a drama. Almost like a dang... I don't know, it's like Romeo and Juliet over here.
Are you feeling that way? Uh, <laughs> I don't know how to describe it. I it's wouldn't just like say such a that. Drama. <laughs> nice guy, Eddie. Yeah. What makes you think he isn't on a plane right now, halfway to Costa Rica? Because I spoke to him on the phone and he said he's on the way down here. What did he say? He said, stay put. <laughs> Maybe a boy in blue here can answer some of these questions about this rat business you've been talking about. Is that Mr. Blue? A piece of work, my friend. That's crazy. They kidnapped a the little cop. <laughs> Mr. Blonde. I know you a long time. I'm not worried. I know you'll pay me back. So you had a few bad months. You write it out. Keep your chin up. I'll be talking to you. Don't worry. <laughs> that guy's about big business, ain't he? Hey, welcome home, Vic. How does freedom feel, huh? It's a change. So he's out the pen. <laughs> all of us. <laughs> Why? Because his shirt? Well, he said how does freedom feel. He, he said it's a change. Oh. <laughs> how is he? He's a won't even let me leave the halfway house. Jungle Bunny goes out there, slits some old woman's throat for 25 cents. He gets Doris Day for a parole officer. Good fella like you, winds up with a ball busting prick. What the hell is a Jungle Bunny, though? <laughs> I've never heard of that. I want you to know I appreciate all the packages you sent me on the inside. Aww. Hey, it was the least I could do. That's nice, Joe. Yeah. What are your plans? I see you sitting there, but I don't believe it. Hey, Eddie. Ah! You see his little elephant foot <laughs> thing right there? Like, what a douche, right? <laughs> and, <laughs> and his elephant tusk. tusk. Yeah. I walk in the door. He's like, Vic, Vic, I'm so glad somebody's finally here who knows what's going on. My son Eddie's a f up. <laughs> he's ruining the business. I mean, I love the guy, but, you know, he's flushing everything down the toilet. Well, Eddie, I hate for you to hear it like this, but... It's very true. <laughs> <laughs> what is this? <laughs> All right, enough of this shit. You Break like, it up. Yeah, you know how the UFC, when they see their boy, they just start wrestling. <laughs> Dad got me on the ground. He tried to f*** me. You wish. Whatever you want to do in the privacy of your own home, go to it. I like you a lot, buddy, but I don't think you're that way. <laughs> oh, he's making, like, jail jokes. Because <laughs> he's been in jail. You know, four years f***ing punks up the ass. You appreciate a piece of prime rib when you say it. No in the world. Hey. Keep talking like a bitch. I'm gonna slap you like a bitch. Come on, man. All right, enough of this shit. I'm sick of it. That's right, Joe. Tell him. A Vic kid's got a parole problem. Who's your PO? Seymour Skagnitty. Won't even let me leave the halfway house unless I get some shitty job. Hey, you come back to work for us, man. It's gotta be like a legal job, bro. <laughs> <laughs> like Bojangles or something. <laughs> you can't just come work for us. Yeah. I can't come back to work for you guys if I gotta worry about uh, making some silly ass 10 o'clock curfew every f night. All right, we can work this out, can't we, Eddie? I'll get you down to Long Beach as a dock worker. You ain't gonna lift shit. You don't even work there. But as far as the records are concerned, you do. <laughs> Call Matthews, the foreman, and tell him he's got a new guy. Boom, you're on the rotation. You get a time card. It's clocked in and out for you every day. And at the end of the week, you get a nice paycheck. Dock workers do very well. Dang. And if he decides to make a surprise visit, that's the day we sent you to Tustin. Pick up a load of shit and bring it back. <laughs> Sorry, Seymour. You just missed him. He's on it. You big, they tell you not to worry. You know, I really appreciate what you guys are doing, but I'd like to know when I can come back, do some real work. Damn, he's ambitious, ain't he? Well, it's hard to say. <sighs> Look, we're just getting ready for a big meeting right now in Vegas. I got an idea. I know you don't like using the boys on these jobs. I'd like to have him in. Let him Rick, in. How would you feel about pulling a job with about five other guys? I'd feel great about it. I would have been like, no. <laughs> That's the guy who's a psycho. Did you see his face? He was like. And if you're the 12th caller, you'll win two tickets to the monster truck extravaganza being held tonight at the Carson Fairgrounds. <laughs> Featuring yeah, Big favorite. Daddy Don Bodine's Yeehaw. truck, the Behemoth. I know you know that. I gotta talk to Daddy and find out what he wants done. All I know is what Vic told me, man. Look at that phone. He took a cop hostage just to get the f*** out of there. You can tell he's the son because he dresses obnoxious. Yeah, he doesn't. Like he wears stuff. like a jumpsuit, like he's yeah. like the cut man for a boxing match or something. Yeah, something like that, yeah. <laughs> I don't know who did what. They got the freak right there. Well, what do I tell these guys about Daddy? You sure that's what he said? Okay, that's what I'll tell you. You like being a f you. <laughs> <laughs> that's more re realistic, though. Dang. That's a little right. What in the Sam Hills going on here? Holy shit, Orange is dead. 
No, he's not dead. But he will be if we don't get him taken care of. The cops were there waiting for us, man. Bullshit. Who did it? What the hell do you think we've been asking each other? You think I did it? You think I set you up? I don't know. But somebody did. Nobody did. Yeah, I don't even know if anyone did. Yeah. Where's Joseph? I don't know. I ain't talked to him. I talked to Doug. He says daddy's coming down here and he's fing pissed. Jesus Christ, give me a fing chance to breathe. I got a few questions of my own here. You ain't dying, he is. All right, Mr. Fing Compassion, I will call somebody. <laughs> oh, Mr. C. <laughs> now, what happened to Brown and Blue? Brown's dead. We don't know what happened to Blue. Nobody's got a clue what happened to Mr. Blue? Either he's alive or he's dead. <laughs> the cops got him. Obviously. Take this the bastard you told me about. If you fing beat this dick long enough, he'll tell you you started the goddamn Chicago fire. Now that don't necessarily make it fing so! Who's got the stones? Please, somebody at least tell me one little look in favor just for my sake. I got somebody a bag. Goes... I got a bag. Okay? I stashed it like we'd be sure this place wasn't a police station. Blondie, stay here and babysit them too. White and pink, you take a car each. I'll follow you. You ditch him. Pick up the stones. While I'm following you, I'll arrange some sort of a doctor for our friend. And if you think Joe's pissed off, that ain't nothing compared to how pissed off I am at him for putting me in the same room as that bastard. <laughs> yeah, he really hates him, don't he? Mm -hmm. I told these guys about staying put. Mr. White whips out his gun. He's sticking it in my face, saying he's going to blow me away. He's the reason the joint turned into a shooting spree. He went crazy in the store, but he seems all right now. <laughs> he seems all right now. <laughs> I told them not to touch the f alarm. They did. If they hadn't done what I told them not to do, they'd still be alive. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect logic. <laughs> Thanks. They're That's enemies. That's your excuse for going on a kill crazy rampage. I don't like alarms, Mr. White. What does it matter who stays with the cop? We ain't letting him go, not after we've seen everybody. <laughs> he said, I ain't been looking. Man! You stay here and take care of these two! White and pink, you come with me, because if Joe gets here and he sees all these cars parked outside, I swear to you, he's going to be just as mad at me as he is at you. Like in a modern movie, they'd be like, okay, the robbery, and then they're here, they get in an argument, then the movie moves on, then there's like a transition where there's some like, you know, some edgy music playing. But this is like <laughs> a like a slow burn drama. That's what I'm yeah. trying to say. It just feels weird. It's like And they stay in one scene for a long time. Yeah, I like it. It's different, ain't it? Mm-hmm. Alone at last. Oh, my lord. Uh oh, he's psycho. Guess what? I think I'm parked in the red zone. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Is his name Officer Bash? I'm not sure. I told you I don't know anything about any setup. You can torture me all you want. Torture you? That's a good. That's a good idea. Sounds Even fun. your boss said there wasn't a setup. My what? <laughs> Excuse me, pal. The flip. One thing I want to make clear to you: I don't have a boss. Nobody tells me what to do. You understand? You hear what I said, you son of a bitch? This guy's like a modern day Theon, ain't he? Not Theon, <laughs> but Ramsey. That guy Maybe. Right this is Ramsey and Theon. Oh, the duct tape. I don't really give a good f what you know or don't know, but I'm gonna torture you anyway. <laughs> it's amusing uh, to me to torture a cop. You can say anything you want, because I've heard it all before. All you can do is pray for a quick death. Dang. Which you ain't gonna get. This guy's psychotic, ain't he? Look, he's fighting the cell. You ever listen to K Billy's oh, no. Super Sounds of the 70s? I'm surprised he's not torturing him, too. <laughs> oh, my word. Stuck in the middle with you? Don't make this a torture song, it's good. <laughs> This guy, this man, what the heck? They ain't straight carving him up, ain't he? Why did they let that guy out of prison? Like, how? Ew! Oh, this just a little ear. Ew! Why'd you do that? Hey, what's going on? You hear that? <laughs> <laughs> I will never think of this song the same ever. This is an ear cutting song. This is an ear getting song right here. Got your ear. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. You come back. You here? <laughs> right in the middle of town. That song was positive and uplifting until I heard it in this light. 
Yeah, I think it's quick Tarantino. <laughs> Remember when you rode by that uh, shop, that body shop, at night, and you thought you saw him torturing that dude? It looked like that. Right. Someone looked like they were sitting in a chair. I wasn't there, guys. I would have investigated to make sure no one was being tortured. I had to go. Oh, my God. Dang. This guy really is something, ain't he? Mr. Blonde's tripping. Oh, my Lord. Oh, my God. God, she's gonna get burned up. What's the matter? He said, No one tells me what to do. Please! Does that, does that burn a little bit? Ah, his ear. Oh. Stop! Is that Lieutenant Dan? Is that Lieutenant Dan? I don't think so. I'm not gonna say anything. Okay, I got a little kid going now, please. Y'all done? Don't! Don't! Fire scared. Don't! What? Don't! Dang. That's my favorite character right there. Orange? Yeah. Good He's shot, like, Orange. He's about to fade off into that orange sunset. That was his last good deed. The ear. First time I've liked that dude. <laughs> We've seen him in like, what, three or four projects by now? The Hulk. Yeah, he was firing the Hulk. Yeah. He said like a monster. What's your name? <laughs> Marvin. Marvin what? Marvin Nash. It was Nash, not Bash. <laughs> Listen to me, Marvin Nash. I'm a cop. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I know. Dang, he was willing to die yeah. for it. Yeah. He knew. Your name's Freddy something. Freddy Noondike. Freddy Noondike. <laughs> Frankie Fischetti introduced us about five months ago. I don't remember that at all. <laughs> I do. Ow! I know, I hate seeing that. There's gas in it. Mm. Ugh. How do I look? <laughs> hey, you look great, brother. Breathing. That's a step. I don't know what to tell you, Marvin. <laughs> oh, this sick Marvin, I need you to hold on. This cop's waiting to move in the block away. The f are they waiting for? I'm fing deformed! Fuck you! I'm fing dying! True. I was thinking the same thing for real. He's complaining mm -hmm. a lot to be alive. Not to Maybe I get it. Joe Cabot shows up. I sent him to get him. They said he's on his way. Don't put out of me now, Martin. We're just gonna sit here and bleed. <laughs> Joe Cabot sticks his head through that door. <laughs> what if he does that? Cab is doing a job and take a big fat guess who wants on a team. This better not be some kind of Freddy Joe. Nice guy. He tells me Joe wants to meet me. And he calls me last night and says Joe's ready. He'll pick me up in 15 minutes. And I meet Joe and a guy named Mr. White. It's a phony name. My name is Mr. Orange. Mr. Orange? Have you ever <laughs> seen this motherfucker before? Mr. White? No, he ain't familiar. He ain't one of Cabot's soldiers either. He's got to be from out of town. But Joe knows him real good. How can you tell? The way they talk to each other. To you talk? Mr. White? A little. About what? Brewers. Now, this is sweet, man, because if this crook's a uh, Brewers fan, his ass has got to be from Wisconsin. And I bet you everything from a diddle dad Joe to a damned if I know that in Milwaukee, they got a sheet <laughs> on this Mr. White motherfucker's ass. Is this guy infiltrating too? Is that why he's dressed like that? Uh <laughs> Long Beach Mike is not your amigo, man. He's selling out his amigos. Yeah, but you get that low life scumbag out of mind and you take care of business, you hear me? God. <laughs> Use the commode story. What's the commode story? It's a scene, man. Memorize it. Look, man, an undercover cop's got to be Marlon Brando. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. To yeah. do this job, you got to be a great actor. You got to be naturalistic. You got to be naturalistic as hell. Because if you ain't a great actor, you're a bad actor. And bad acting is bullshit, <laughs> this job. Yeah. That's an amusing anecdote about a drug deal. Oh, gosh. I got to memorize all this? Just think about it like it's a, a joke, all right? You memorize what's important, the rest you make your own, all right? Yeah, you improvise. Joke, <laughs> Whose line is it anyway? Oh. Now, the things you got to remember are the details. It's the details to sell your story. And this particular story takes place in a men's room. So you got to know all the details about the men's room. You got to know if they got paper towels or a blower to dry your hands with. You got to know if the stalls ain't got no doors or not, man. You got to know if they got liquid soap or that pink granulated powder shit they used to use in high school, remember? You got to know if they got hot water <laughs> or not. Like... You got to know every detail there is to know about this commode. You got to remember that this story is about you. 
and how you perceive the events that went down. The only way to do that, my brother, you keep saying it. So isn't he like Academy right now or something? <laughs> is he just learning the ropes? I guess so. That's his like trainer. <laughs> <laughs> I still had a connection, which was insane because I couldn't get any weed any further. Than I had a connection. <laughs> Silver Surfer. <laughs> Santa Cruz and all my friends knew it. They knew I still smoked, so they asked me to buy some for them when I was buying for me. But it got to be. To be <laughs> Every time I bought some weed, I was buying for four or five different people. I <laughs> said, but then that got to be a pain in the ass. People call me on the phone all the time. I couldn't even <laughs> take without six phone calls interrupting me. Hey, <laughs> look at where they're at. I know. Motherfucker, I'm trying to watch The Lost Boys, you know? I got all my shit laid out in $60 bags. They don't want $60 worth, they want $10 worth. And break it up is a major pain in the ass. This is a very <laughs> weird situation. He was killing that. I mean, He's doing a little better now, ain't he? Him. She's begging me to sell it. So I told her, I wasn't going to be Joe the pot man anymore, but I would take a little bit and sell it to my close, close, close friends. She had a brick of weed she was selling. She didn't want to go to buy alone. Her brother usually goes with her, but he's in county unexpectedly. What for? His traffic tickets gone warrant. They stopped him for something, found warrants on him, took him to county. Now, she doesn't want to walk around alone with all that weed. Now, pick him the guy up at the train station. Wait a minute. You go to the train station to pick up the buyer with the weed on you? Yeah, a guy needed it right away. Don't ask me why. Now, I'm carrying the weed around in one of those little carry-on bags. I gotta take a piss. The bathroom story. He's doing so a good job. He's selling it. And who's standing there? Four Los Angeles County <laughs> Sheriffs and a German Shepherd. Bunch of 12s in there. When I walked through the door, they all stopped what they were talking about, and they looked at me. I mean, it's obvious. He's barking at me. Every nerve ending, all my senses, blood in my veins, everything I have is screaming. <laughs> the way Take it's filmed right now. <laughs> just bam. Panic hits me like a bucket of water. First, there's a shock of it. Bam! Right in the face. I'm just standing there, drenched in panic, and all these sheriffs looking at me. Sure as that f dog can. They can smell it on me. So, hey, so, so anyway, I got my gun drawn, right? And I tell him, freeze, don't move. <laughs> And this little idiot's looking right at me, nodding his head, yeah, and he's saying, I know, I know. His right hand is creeping towards the glove box. I'm gonna blow you away right now. Put your hands on the dash. I know, buddy, I know, I know. <laughs> and meanwhile, you know, his hand is still going for the glove box. Buddy, I'm gonna shoot you in the face. He needs to walk out right before the story's over. Oh my God, he's gonna go wash Listen his hands. Listen the officer, put your hands on the dash. He casually puts his hands on the dash. What was he going for? This Registration. Ah, you're kidding. No, man, stupid <laughs> citizen doesn't know how close he came to getting blown away. That close, <laughs> man. Jesus. Read the room. <laughs> you can't even get your registration no more. That's stressing me out. <laughs> you look like a deer to me. <laughs> <laughs> You know how to handle that situation. Just shoot your <laughs> pants and dive in and swim. Great advice. Tell me more about Kevin. He's a cool guy. Uh, he's funny. You remember the Fantastic Four? Oh, well, yeah, with that uh, invisible <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Thing. <laughs> Mother <laughs> looks just like the thing. I don't know what the thing looks like. Yeah. Dang. Grab your jackets. I'm parked outside. I'll be right down. Those are some blue walls. Yeah, they are, aren't they? They got some dirty hands touching them light switches. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> oh, that's the boot gun. Yeah, that's that Veronica Mars. They call it a boot scoop. And boogie. <laughs> Oh man, he's divorced. You just put the ring on because it goes with the story. What if he's I not guess, even divorced? What if he just uses it, it for the story? I don't know. You're not gonna get hurt. You're fucking Beretta. They believe every fucking word because you're super cool. <laughs> that would be stressful, honestly. There goes our boy. Guy has to have rocks in his head the size of Gibraltar to work undercover. You want one of these? Yeah, give me the bear claw. Was it a pastry? Uh, this reminds me of your mom right here. I love this song. Black women ain't the same as white women. There's a slight difference. It was on Guardians of the Galaxy Very too. Very funny. When a white put up with a black 
you wouldn't put up with for a minute, man. They got a line, and if you cross it, they f*** you up. I gotta go along <laughs> with Pink on that one. I've seen it at one of Daddy's clubs. It's a black cocktail waitress named E. Lois. Where was she from, Compton? <laughs> from Ladora Heights. Oh, well, Ladora Heights. That's uh -huh. the Black Beverly Hills. <laughs> I ain't never been in California. <laughs> black California. Right, I'm over here just like, huh? <laughs> I don't know anyway. about it. She looked like uh, Christy Love. Remember that TV oh, show? Oh, yeah, yeah, Christy yeah. Love. You under arrest, TV. sugar. <laughs> what the heck? What was the name of the chick who played Christy Love? They love that. No, it wasn't Pam Greer. I feel like I've Pam seen Greer that before or something. Because I just like, Pam Greer I don't know. did the film. They like clicked or something. So, who was Christy Love? What the f should I know? Whoever it was, it doesn't matter. She looked they exactly like They can't just like Google it either. I come into the club one night. And there's Carlos, she's the bartender, he's a friend of mine. <laughs> <laughs> and now, apparently, Lady E was married to a real piece of dog. He used to do things to her. Well, do things, do things. Like, what? What would he do? He beat her up or something? I don't know what he did, he just did things, all right? <laughs> so anyway. Yeah, shut up, cop. One night, That's he not plays a real questions. tool. He falls asleep on the f couch. She sneaks up on him, and she puts some wacko glue on his oh. and glues his to his belly. <laughs> no. Hey, I'm, Jesus I'm, I'm, I'm serious, serious man. I'm serious. I'm dead mm -hmm. serious. They had to call the paramedics to cut the prick loose. Literally. <laughs> cut the prick loose. Was he all pissed off? <laughs> <laughs> How would you feel if every time you had to take a piss, you had to do a f***ing handstand? <laughs> 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 oh, you guys like to tell jokes and giggle and kid around, huh? Giggling like a bunch of young bros in a schoolyard. <laughs> well, let me tell a joke. Five guys sitting at a bullpen, wondering how the f they got there. Finally, someone comes up with the idea, wait a minute, while we were planning this caper, all we did was sit around and tell f***ing jokes. Got the message? This caper's over, and I'm sure it's going to be a successful one. Hell, we'll get down to Hawaiian Islands. I'll roll and laugh with all of you. Right now, it's a matter of business. With the exception of Eddie and myself, we're going to be using aliases on this job. Under no circumstances, I don't want any one of you to relate to each other by your Christian names. And I don't want any talk about where you've been, your wife's name, where you might have done time. Here are your names. Mr. Brown, <laughs> Mr. White, Mr. Blonde, Mr. Blue, Mr. Orange, and Mr. Pink. Why am I Mr. Pink? <laughs> because you're a it, all right? <laughs> <laughs> Why can't we pick our own colors? Try it once, it doesn't work. You get four guys all fighting over who's going to be Mr. Black. No way. I pick. You're Mr. Pink. Be thankful <laughs> you're not Mr. Yellow. Mr. Brown, that's a little too close to Mr. Shit. Well, Mr. Pink sounds like Mr. P How about if I'm Mr. <laughs> Purple? Some guy on some other job is Mr. Purple. You're Mr. <laughs> Pink. Who cares what your name is? Yeah, that's easy for you to say. You're Mr. White. You have a cool-sounding name. <laughs> all right, look, if it's no so big cool, deal, you're Mr. Pink. Back. You want to trade? They need to grow up. <laughs> There's two ways you can go on this job. My way or the highway. Hey. Now, what's it gonna be, Mr. Pink? Jesus Christ, Joe, forget about it. I'm Mr. Pink, let's move on. <laughs> move on when I feel like it. Let's go to work. <laughs> Make it in for? his nerves. Where are you? I stand outside and guard the door. I don't let anybody go in or go out. Mr. Brown. Mr. Brown waits in the car. Mr. Blonde and Mr. Blue. The crowd control, they handle customers and employees. That girl's ass. Sitting right here on my. Spitting good, Mr. ain't he? <laughs> uh, you two take the manager in the back and make him give you the diamonds. We're out of there in two minutes, not one second longer. What happens if the manager won't give you the diamonds? They're insured up the ass. They're not supposed to give you any resistance whatsoever. If you get a customer or an employee who thinks he's Charles Bronson, take the butt of your gun and smash their nose in. Freaks everybody out. Nobody says after that. You might get some talk shit to you. But give her a look like you're gonna smash her in the face next. Somebody's gonna be like, uh uh. Now, if it's a manager, <laughs> no, that's a different not. story. <laughs> the manager's no better than the around. So, if you get one that's giving you a static, cut off one of his fingers, the little one, then tell him his thumb's next. <laughs> After that, I'll tell you if he wears ladies' underwear. So, he'll tell you the truth, I guess? I wonder if there's ever been a cop who went undercover and loved it so much they just stayed a criminal. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, bump that, I ain't going back. Dude, did you really just run into that like that? <laughs> He's so eccentric, Quentin Tarantino. He's always like... <laughs> got blind, man. You're not blind. You just got blood in your eyes, all right?
What? Dang, his boy's getting shot. Dang. Did he die or not? Let's go. He killed himself off in his first movie. That's pretty tough. Yeah, that's pretty crazy, right? It's crazy he had to let him do that. Whew. Hold it! Hold it! Right whoa, there! Whoa, 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 whoa. Get him! Oh. oh, so she shot him. Dang, he shot her back too, though. Like, he's really in character. That man's top priority trying to bring him down. Oh, bro. And this is where we start. Oh, Another weird chronological movie, right? Or whatever the heck you want to call it. You're hurt. You're hurt real bad. But you oh, ain't dying. The fire, oh, yeah, they're besties. Oh, this blood scared Low key. shit out of me, like. That should have been our first clue. He's scared of blood. I didn't think a cop would be scared of blood, though. Probably not, but... It just doesn't seem like he, you know, is used to shooting people and stuff. Oh, isn't this his first undercover gig? That guy had to show him the ropes. Why does he go to him first? What the f*** happened? You slashed the cop's face, cut off his ear, and was gonna burn him alive. What? Mom went crazy. You slashed the cop's face, cut off his ear, and was gonna burn him alive. This cop? Dang, okay, that's Ooh. why they're buds. He went crazy, something like that. Dang. He was gonna kill the cop and me when you guys walked through the door. He was gonna blow you to hell and make out for the diamonds. I don't buy it. It doesn't make sense. <clears throat> you weren't there during the job, Betty. You didn't see how he acted. We did. It's right about he the was year. wild. Off. You're saying that Mr. Blonde was gonna kill you, and then when we got back, he was gonna kill us, take the satchel of diamonds and scram. I'm right about that, right? That's correct, that's your story? I swear on my mother's eternal soul is what happened. The man you just killed just got released from prison. He got caught at a company warehouse full of hot items. All he had to do was say my dad's name, but he didn't, he kept his mouth shut. So he's not He did four that. years for us. You're telling me that this very good friend of mine who did four years for my father. He's just gonna decide to rip us off? Tell me what really happened. What the hell? That's kind of smart, though, right? Yeah. It'd just be more bullshit. This man set us up. What the f are you talking about? That lump of s is working with the LAPD. Joe, Joe, I don't know what you think you know, but you're wrong. Like hell, I am. I know this man. He wouldn't do that. I do. <laughs> the cocksucker tipped off the cops, and a Mr. Brown and Mr. Blue killed. How do you know all this? I was the only one I wasn't 100% on. That's your proof? You don't need proof when you have instinct. I ignored her before, but no more. Uh-oh. Oh, oh we in a Mexican standoff. I'm not gonna let you make. Come on, guys. Nobody wants this. We're supposed to be professionals. <laughs> right. Hey, right, look. That's what he keeps saying. There's no need for this, man. Let's just put our guns down and let's settle this the conversation. Joe. Right. If you kill that man, you die next. We have been friends. And you respect my dad and I respect you, but I will put bullets right through your heart. You put that gun down now. God damn you, Joe. Larry, stop pointing that gun at my dad! You did it. <laughs> that guy. Dang, he hid under the ramp like that? He's like, what the heck? That wasn't very professional of them. Mm-mm. He stashed the diamond too, didn't he? It was him. Are they all about to just, bruh? He's the only one who's about to make it out. Good old Mr. Pink. Even the cop had to die, man. Jeez, that guy's jacket was too cool to get shot. <laughs> Boy, that's what your dad would have wore back in the day. Yeah, that was probably a sound. Did. With the boots and all. I'm sorry. Looks like we're good. Do a little time. You yeah, have about that. You're gonna be doing it by yourself. I'm a cop. Don't oh. tell him he's gonna shoot you, bro. Larry. Sorry. 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 I'm a cop. I was not expecting that reaction. Oh. 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 I'm sorry. 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 Drop the 
man. They shouldn't have even asked him. They should have just shot him. What in the heck? All right, guys, that was Reservoir Dogs, babe. Uh, what, what did you think about this movie? I I, am, I don't really know what to think about that movie. That was just I was crazy, not expecting right? Expecting it, yeah. I'll put it this way, man. I was absolutely enamored with the movie, especially the second half. Is that the right word? Uh, that word probably doesn't describe what I'm feeling, but I was really interested to see how it was all going to play out and tie and together. Yeah, it was just man. I don't know why he told him he was a cop. You shouldn't <laughs> have told him, man. You should have just let him think because he shot him. Yeah. Jeez. Uh, crazy movie. Absolutely crazy. Uh, okay, so. The elephant in the room is this movie is extremely gory. It has a lot of cussing in it, a lot of like crazy language and stuff like that. And you're a lady, you're a classy lady, right? That's why I love her very much. So I know this isn't your cup of tea in that particular way, but looking past that, did you enjoy the movie? Yeah, it felt like like a what do you call it? like a murder like a mystery? true crime? Yeah, yeah like did a it mystery. Not. Yes. Yeah, crazy movie. I like yeah. that aspect of it. I don't see how the word reservoir dogs is relevant. Who did you think the rat was? The whole time, who yeah. I think it was, well, I thought before, it was Mister Pink for some reason. Like he just gave he was, me like he was up to something. Well, I see what you're saying. I, I kind of got that vibe because I was thinking he was trying to keep everyone like flowing in one direction, yeah. trying to keep everyone on the like focus. And it seemed like he was really trying to like get everyone to incriminate themselves in that mm -hmm. sense, if that's what you're saying. But you're right. I don't know why the heck Reservoir Dogs has anything to do with. <laughs> Anyways, let us know what what the name Reservoir Dogs means. Um, Probably a pretty obvious meaning that we're going to miss, but crazy story. You guys know how we felt about it because you watched your reaction. I don't know how much we can talk about it. It was an amazing piece of theater. I'll put it that way. Uh, that's what it was. It was theater. And I feel like it just told a story. And there was so many things to appreciate about just the quality of, I guess, movie making that goes into this. You know, there's so, diff there's so many different ways to make a movie, right? And this one was just very... I don't know how to describe it. It was just different. It yeah. even felt different than Pulp Fiction to me. Right. Right. He just has a different way of doing like storytelling it was yeah yeah and it's, i like it's the, very unique i love that the timeline jumped all over the place a little bit not all over the place but you guys get what i'm saying it wasn't just a straight past story and um we're two for two on quentin tarantino movies to do that and i really like that uh because it just gives you like another layer of something to pay attention to it's unique i've, right. never, I've not seen that before what was this movie about <laughs> I don't. I don't know what it was about. It was just a crazy story. A heist, it was just a, a heist goes wrong. <laughs> I guess. I guess the point of the movie was you just gotta. You gotta be a professional, right? Because that's what the guy who made it out kept saying. We gotta be professionals. And the psychopathic guy, he got shot by the cop because he was doing the most. Then the he was other doing guy, the most. The other guy was gonna say what his name was. He wasn't being professional. Like yeah, just a lot of things like that, right? So. Yeah, I guess the point of the movie was just you got to be a professional, man. You got to know your role, play it well, stay in your lane, all that stuff. I feel like I have so much more I want to say about the movie, but I, there's, I just have so much all over the place. It was just a crazy movie. It was interesting seeing Quentin Tarantino playing in a movie again because his scene in Pulp Fiction where he's just upset because these dudes show up and his wife's going to be home yeah. all the time was just so out of left field. And it almost felt like, I don't know how to describe it, guys. Almost like a just a bizarre movie, a very bizarre movie. And it's so weird and bizarre in that way that it really makes it stand out in my mind. So I guess in that sense, I really liked it. Yeah. Pulp Fiction. And I think Quentin Tarantino was just as good in this one, you know. Uh, it felt timeless. Like, I didn't really notice it was 30 two years old and it would have been there was nothing that would have struck me as like how old it was but i really liked how it was filmed how it would say in one room yeah and not only just in one room you weren't like close up like this person says this then you look at this person you're like far away in the room like that you're, garage you're they chose to film yeah. this in i bet so many people for so long in their lives has pictured that garage yeah it's like like when they yeah. picture like chopping up their boss at work or whatever the case may be i bet that's where y'all picture taking them because y'all are a bunch of psychos yeah like and that was probably among some of the first like that they've seen so it's probably like something you know you iconically go back to it was one of those movies that it seems so simple but it really wasn't but it was just such a well put together movie i, I said it in the movie and i didn't really elaborate on it because i didn't want to uh interrupt the movie but you know like in a, in a modern day action movie it starts out something crazy happens guy has a story he's an undercover cop something goes wrong they meet up in a warehouse there's a five minute scene where someone's passionate and then they move on to the next plan and then you know it's like movies have the same formula this what this felt like they really focused in on 
they didn't focus on the planning. They didn't focus on the action. They really focused on the immediate aftermath of a heist going wrong. Right. And trying to deal with who's the rat, what's going on, and navigating the chaos. And sometimes when things blow up in your face and the chaos sets in, the only way you can truly navigate it when you never really know what the right answer is is to just try to be as professional as possible. And that's what we saw in this movie. It was interesting because they showed like the camaraderie of the men in the beginning just by simply like having something debatable like tipping and not tipping. So they were like showing, I guess, like their character by that. Right. And then like they showed like a brief how they got involved and then that's it. My thing with tipping, man, because my whole thing with tipping is if someone waits on me, I have no problem tipping. Like if I go somewhere and someone walks up to me and says, hey, what you eating today? Can I get you a drink? No problem tipping. But and to all my subway workers out there, I'm so sorry. And subway just needs to pay you more because when I go to order a sandwich, like I don't want to tip. That's like going to McDonald's and ordering some McDonald's food and then them expecting you to tip them. That's crazy. It, it, to me, guys, let the debate rage. Maybe I'm just an asshole. I don't know. But I don't really personally want to go to subway and tip. It's not really against subway. It's just a. <laughs> it's just you guys know what I'm talking about, man. Like these employees figured out that if you just start. Every time you have a receipt, they'll say it's going to ask you a question. It's always got to ask you a question. And the question is, will you tip? And they do that. And I don't think that is right that they do that, man. They need to because you go in and it ain't like the food's cheaper. The food, man, don't get me started, guys. Don't get me started. Anyways, man, that's just me howling at the moon, uh, raging. I really enjoyed the movie. Um, Definitely don't mind tipping at restaurants. I do not want to tip at fast food restaurants like Subway. I'm so sorry. I just don't want to tip on a sandwich. I'm, I'm so sorry. But uh, if you actually made it five dollars and then charged me ten, then you could give the employee five, and then you could keep five or something like that. But you don't have to charge me sixteen dollars for a sandwich. Anyways, man, thank you guys so much for tuning in. For real, it was a lot of fun. You can go to uh, Patreon.com/slash/Yachtobers and check out the full uncut reaction to this movie. And it's gonna have all the censored stuff, not censored, and all that stuff. Which was um, a lot of stuff. Guys, I don't one. like censorship. She doesn't like censorship. No one likes censorship. No one believes in censorship. We are Americans after all. But you know what? At the end of the day, YouTube does everything in their power to try to make sure that if you put time and effort into making videos for people, they'll they'll do everything they can do to take your money if they can. So with all the cussing and stuff, they're gonna do everything in their power. So I might have to cut the cussing out if they don't, you know, allow me to keep it up without hurting my channel, but um with that being said i'll do my best but yeah we'll see you guys on the next one